Hi everyone, it's Mindy and welcome back. Today I'm going to be showing you how I created this super cute box card using products from Pink and Main. This video is a little bit longer than usual just because I wanted to give you some really good instructions how to create this. Okay, so I'm going to start off with the Make a Card die from Pink and Main. It has a lot of great pieces to it, but I'm just going to be using the actual box card pieces. So this first one I'm showing you is the main piece of your box card. You'll need to cut two of them. And I'm using uh, paper tray ink cardstock because it is a really nice thick cardstock. I've learned from experience when I give these to kids or friends that if you use a, a thinner cardstock, they tend to not stand up as well. So I'm using a really nice sturdy cardstock. This piece here I'm showing you is going to be the insert. So this is what you're not going to see in the card, but it goes in the inside. You'll need two of those. The next pieces here are the little, little sticks, I guess you could call, that you're going to attach either your sentiments or your images to. And I cut four of them. You do get two of them in the set, but I decided I wanted four for my project. Now for this piece I'm showing you here, there is a die that creates a smaller rectangle. So this is where you can use some decorative paper. I'm using some plaid from the Celebrate Paper Pack that just released in March. And these are double sided so you can use either side. And it leaves a stitched edging on it. So if you decide to use regular cardstock, it'll have a nice stitched edge to it. And then we have the squares for the side as well. And you'll need to cut two pieces of each so that your whole bottom half of your box will be decorated on the outside. Now we're going to be decorating these flaps. Now, most of them, when I fold them over, we're going to fold them out. So we're going to decorate the inside. And you'll need to cut two of each of these sizes. I'm using this balloon paper, so you'll have to watch your orientation and kind of plan it out a little bit. That's really the only thought process uh, when you're doing them. It's just if you have um, a pattern paper that's like that, if it's plaids, it's not a big deal. But otherwise, you'll have to kind of think about the direction of your paper. Now I'm just coming in and I'm scoring along those lines. So the first small flap is going to be what connects your box. The next one I'm scoring in. So that's going to be one side of our box. Coming in with that second piece, scoring that down really nice. Same thing on that second scored line. So this is the outside of our box and those tiny flaps are what's going to connect them all. So here's just what that's going to kind of look like. Now I'm going to start working on the flaps. So the smaller ones I'm folding out. One of these back flaps I'm going to leave standing straight up because that's going to be the back of my box and I want to decorate that. The rest of these I can fold out. So I'm just folding those out, scoring those down so it's a really nice crisp score line. And there we have our outside flaps. So our box is slowly coming together. And see I have that back flap there, so that's going to be the back of the box. And that's the piece I had to kind of be careful on how I cut that out because I wanted the balloons to be in the right direction. So now I'm just taking some regular adhesive, anything you have on hand will do, and I'm going to start attaching these decorative pieces to all the flaps, starting with my back piece, so I don't get that one confused with anything else. And then I'm going to go around the entire box. So I'm going to start adding in the squares to the outside. And like I said, they're double sided. So either side would work and they all match. All of this came from the Celebrate Paper Pack. So I'm just going to continue going around the outside of my box, adding in my decorative paper and also on the flaps. 
I did speed this part up just a little bit because it is just showing you me gluing pieces down, but I didn't want to leave any steps out of this whole process. I wanted you to be able to see where I was putting everything. And like I said, if you're using a type of pattern paper, just watch the orientation of your pattern paper so that whatever is supposed to be on those outside flaps is going in the right direction. So once you do your first box, these are really quick and easy to put together. And then it's just a matter of you know, coloring up images or stamping sentiments, whatever you want to add to your box. These are great for kids' party invitations, birthday cards, greeting cards, anything. They're just like anything else. These are just a great interactive way, something different that people might not see every day. So I will just go ahead and get this part finished up and then we're going to start putting our box together. Okay, so here is how our box looks. I like to kind of just line things up as I go just to see to make sure everything is in the right direction. Now with these little flaps to attach our box and put it together, I do recommend a strong double-sided tape. Like I said, I've just learned from experience that regular adhesive just doesn't seem to hold as well. If you have a liquid adhesive that's really strong, that would work too. I just happen to be using this skinny double-sided tape for mine. So I'm just adding a small strip to those flaps. And I'm, I'm constantly creasing my scored lines just to make sure that I'm getting those nice crisp lines and it's going to stay the shape that I want it to. And so you'll see I'm folding this one flap in and I'm going to remove that backing to my tape and I'm lining up my other side. I found this was easiest to keep my box straight so when it stands up it's not crooked. So I'm just lining that up, pushing down, and I'm going to kind of bend that over and do the same thing to the other side. And I constantly just push down, make sure everything is nice and flat in the inside, that all my lines are lining up. Remove that backing and attaching the other part. And then our box is going to just slowly take shape here and it's going to be a matter of decorating. So pushing that down, making sure everything in the inside is nice and flat. I'll come in with my score tool again and just make sure all my scored lines are creased and good and there is the box and I'm just pulling those flaps out so you can see my balloon paper this is going to make a really great birthday card and there's the box and you can see now why I left that one part straight up I didn't fold it because that's the back of our card that we can decorate looking pretty awesome now we're gonna move on to the inside so these two skinny strips I'm gonna come in fold those scored lines this is gonna be in the inside of the box this is what we're gonna attach our little sticks to that I'll have whether it's our sentiments or images so I'll just score those down and these little flaps are gonna be what's attached to the sides of the box so once again, I'm bringing in my double-sided tape and adding a couple strips to it for each side and each piece. And the way I have them lined up, I just fit the two. You could probably get a third one in if you really wanted. Just depends on where you line up your pieces. Okay, so I'm just going to come in and remove that backing of my double-sided tape. And then I'll line it up in the inside of the box. This one I'm going to put towards the back of, block, back of the box. It's going to kind of give me an idea how much room I have. This part is a little bit tricky, but I just slide that in and just gently press on the edges of those flaps where I had the adhesive. If I just gently do it, then if I need to maneuver it, I still have a little bit of wiggle room because double-sided tape, being it is a strong adhesive, once you push it down really good, it's, it's going to be there. So I'm just holding that down, making sure it's lined up where I want it to be, and then I'm going to come in and fold my box card or, or squish my box card down. And then just push down on that, making sure my adhesive is pushed down really good and it's attaching. And then it lays nice and flat. So if I do decide I want to mail this, everything is nice and flat. 
And there is the first one. And honestly, if it's a little crooked, not a big deal. Nobody's really going to notice or see it because we're going to be putting um, some images and things there. So that piece is ready. And I'm going to do the same thing to this second one. Now there's enough room where if I were to line this up, uh, these flaps right with that first piece, there, like I said, could be enough room for a third one. I just didn't need to add. I had enough uh, with my finished project. So I'll just go ahead and do the same process, lining those flaps up with the edge of my box, tucking that in and just gently pressing on the edges so my adhesive catches and I can kind of wiggle it where I need to. And do the same thing to the other side. And then I'll go ahead and flatten the box again so that my edges and everything catches really nice and it's got a good stick to it. And then you can see there's no bottom to the box, so you'll be able to see right down through it. But all the action's on the top, so you won't need to have a bottom. <laughs> there it is, coming together really great. And that fun balloon paper, I think this is really good paper. Okay, so as I was playing around off camera, I decided I wanted to actually have a plain white piece for that back piece because I had an idea come that I wanted to put a banner back there and the banner was just a little bit too much with the balloon paper. So I just recut another strip there and I'm just going to add it right on top. Fits great. And then I took the small fishtail banner die that also was just released in this March release and I cut out these little banner pieces from... Uh, some polka dot paper out of the celebrate paper pack i just thought this was really cool to have a banner in the background there and like i said it was just a little bit too busy with the balloons hanging so i'm just going to come in and attach these pieces along that back panel and in the end i did have to trim off you can see there's a little bit of overhang i did afterwards come in and trim that off a little bit so that it did fit in my envelope and i didn't have anything in the way so I'm just going through getting those added. Like I said, regular adhesive will work great for this. This isn't as big of a deal of how strong the adhesive is. Just a nice good adhesive, whatever you use. And I just thought this polka dot paper worked really well with what I had because it all came out of the same paper pack and matches great. So just pushing that down nice and good. And I have that decorated piece, and I love that banner back there. I think that was such a great touch to it. So now the fun part comes in, more fun parts, of adding in some images. So I used the Fired Up stamp set, which is also part of the March release. And I just colored up some of these dragon images and a couple of the presents. I stamped the present twice and colored them up. And then one of the sentiments. And I'm just going to add these to those four strips that I had cut out earlier. And I'll just use regular adhesive for this. I'll show you a trick that I did here in a minute to make sure that those stick on there really good. So I'm going to do that for each piece. I'll go ahead and add adhesive to the top, attach the image or the present, and I do end up cutting a little bit off of the sticks just depending on how far down I glued it. Now here's the trick that I did. I went ahead and since these have coordinating dies, I cut out these two images from just plain white cardstock. And then I'm adding that to the back of my image. So it's going to cover up that stick line and also make this a little bit more sturdy. So it's another great thing about having the coordinating dies with these stamp sets is you can do things like this to give it a nice complete look and you don't have anything in the back with the marker showing through. Because I did color these with the Copic markers. So nobody will see anything like that. It'll be a nice, complete project. And they fit perfectly, and these stamp sets are just adorable. Love these dragons. So just finishing up, putting a nice covering of adhesive on there so it sticks really well. Lining up my image perfectly. 
and finishing off my cute little images. Then going ahead and um, getting these presents added as well. And I'm just going to have these kind of tucked. I don't have them sticking out too far. I just wanted something a little festive, more to go with it, a little added extra element. And I did cut pieces for these as well, since there is a coordinating die to go with the present too. So I went ahead and cut two of those to add as the backing. So everything has this really nice finished off look. So I'll go ahead and get these presents finished up. I had stamped a sentiment also from the Fired Up stamp set. And I just layered that with some of the dark blue cardstock that I was using throughout the project. So I layer, layered that up. And I'm going to be adding that to one of my flaps. So you'll see here in just a minute. I have that just layered up, add some adhesive to that, and I'll go ahead and attach that to the front of my flap so I have a sentiment to go with my totally fun card box. Adding some of that double-sided adhesive just because it was handy. You can really use any adhesive for this. And getting that nice and centered in the front. I think anyone receiving a card like this would totally get a kick out of it. This is just such a fun idea. And I'm really just loving that banner in the back. I just think that's such a cool effect to go with the whole party theme. All right, so now we can go ahead and start putting on the finishing touches of our box. So I'm just grabbing some adhesive and adding these pieces to the inside and I'm just tucking them in. Sorry, I didn't realize I was off camera here for just a second. So I'm just tucking those in and then pushing down on the back to make sure that they're adhered on there really good. And I'm gonna do this for the dragon and the presents. Just kind of eyeballing it, making sure that I can see all the pieces. I really hope you give this box card a try. This is really such a great idea. It's called Make a Card Die from Pink and Main. You can pick it up at www.pinkandmain.com. I'll have all of my supplies listed down below in the video description and also on my blog so that you can go ahead and pick these up too. These are just a lot of fun. I cannot wait to create more of these. Just You can do the girl theme. You can make even just hello or celebrate cards so there it's coming together so nice this looks so cute with those dragons popping out of the top I just love that and as I'm going along I'm just pushing down making sure everything is stuck really good look at that how fun is this and those dragons seriously too cute love them and that pretty much finishes off our card. So I just make sure everything is adhered really good, that it uh, folds really good together. And then what I'm going to do now is show you that it does fit in an envelope. So I'm going to get this folded up and tucked into the card or into the envelope. Sorry. Some of my pieces I didn't have adhered down all the way to the corners, so those were kind of starting to stick there. But... I think that's so cute. Oh, yep, see, this is where I'm realizing I need to trim down my banners a little bit. So I'll just go ahead and trim that down. You could always use a bigger envelope if you wanted to leave things hanging off the side. So these would fit in a bigger envelope too. So I'm just going to trim those down so it fits nice and snug inside my envelope. And that's going to finish off the box card. I really hope you enjoyed today's project. This was a lot of fun to create. A lot of great ideas can go with these. If you did enjoy the video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already, already a subscriber, I hope you do consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you so much for watching and have yourself a fantastic day.